If you're watching this video, the chances are quite high that you've played Minecraft or heard of Minecraft. The game has sold over 200 million copies worldwide, spanning players across many different versions. But the version with the most history is definitely Minecraft Java Edition. While it wasn't always called Java Edition, since the mobile and later Bedrock versions came along much later, I'll only be discussing versions from the PC version of Minecraft, not the Windows 10 Edition. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you search it up online, the first release of Minecraft is dated around 17th of May 2009. This is when the first early classic version of the game was released, but the first version of Minecraft was actually developed on May 13th. At the time, Notch was very busy with the game as he released over 15 versions within one week. Of those versions, the earliest one still available in a Minecraft launcher is RD-132211. The version in the launcher, however, was recompiled in 2013 from old source code and thus is not the original version that Notch made and published. This first version was very bare bones since you could barely call it a game at this point. You could place and destroy blocks, but you didn't have the choice of what blocks to place. When you placed a block on grass level, it would be a grass block, and placing it anywhere else would place a cobblestone block. The game had saving, although the world was very small and you could only build within the invisible borders. The generation was flat, unlike the early cave game test videos uploaded by Notch on YouTube. These videos show an earlier version from a few days before this one, where the generation created messy caves with no logic to them. Surprisingly, there are two more pre-classic versions from May 15th and May 16th that are still available in the launcher. Both are also recompilations from 2013, and another pre-classic version to note is RD-2009-0515. This version, although it has been lost to time, added dirt, stone and wooden planks. You can now pick blocks by pressing number keys on your keyboard and spawn humans by pressing G. The version also added a crosshair, a full screen mode, new player physics and a ton of bug fixes. The other two versions still in the launcher aren't so important since the one from May 15th only added block breaking particles and the version from May 16th added saplings, a new plank texture and cliffs if you can really call them cliffs at this point. And the last known pre-classic version only added bug fixes. From this point on, Notch gave the versions more logical names. The oldest classic version, 0.0.11a, is still available in the launcher. This is still a recompilation from 2013, and it'll take some time before we reach the actual first original version, which is not a remake or a recompilation from a later date. This version once again only fixed bugs, so let's skip over a few versions to the next notable release. Version 0.012a. Although being gone forever added quite a few features. It added bedrock as a new block at the bottom of the world, as well as water and lava. At the time, both liquids spread infinitely and did not drown or damage the player. All they really did was ruin your builds. You could swim, although it's very different from today's swimming. The border was replaced with an infinite ocean and pressing F switched between different render distances. Next is version 0.0.14a, another unavailable version. Clouds were added, as well as block picking and many new blocks. These include sand, gravel, gold ore, iron ore, coal ore, logs and leaves. Sand and gravel did have physics, but instead of smoothly falling down, they simply teleported down. Trees could now also generate, and version 0.0.14a underscore 04 added spawn point saving, which also added a famous bug where you could save your location while in the air, loading, load it and then jump again and repeat the process to gain infinite height. We now exit the early classic era and enter the multiplayer tests. Notch realized the potential his game had and the praise it was getting from its small fanbase, so he decided it would be cool to try implementing a, a multiplayer feature. Multiplayer Test 1 added other players as the human texture from the humans you could spawn by pressing G. You could also place blocks inside of other players, so it's safe to say this wasn't the smoothest multiplayer experience. This version is still available as a .json code file. One thing you should also note is how frequently Notch changed block textures. In almost every version, one or more textures were changed, for example in this version, oak leaves, oak logs, gravel and sand all changed textures, albeit very minor. 
In multiplayer test 5, a chat was added. Players could access it by pressing T, a keybind that is still the same to this very day. It was only from version 0.0.16a that commands were first added. This version, released on June 9th, added slash ban, slash kick and slash broadcast. The command slash broadcast was renamed in version 0.0.16a underscore 01 to slash c, which is still uh, a command today. Version 0.0.18a added slash teleports. Version 0.0.19a added sponges, the only way to fix the fact that water spreads all over the place and destroys my artworks. Glass was also added as well as a working hotbar. Version 0.0.20a added a ton of features. First, you can now press B to access a menu containing every block to choose from, basically an early version of the inventory. This version also added the gold block, brown and red mushrooms, roses and dandelions, and also cloth. Cloth is an early version of wool and came in 16 colors. These colors were very strange and were white, light grey, dark grey, red, orange, yellow, chartreuse, what? Green, spring green, cyan, capri, ultramarine, violet, purple, magenta, and rose. Version 0.0.22a added sounds. Yeah, that's right. Before this version, the game was pretty much silent. There were now footstep sounds and also music from C418 and Notch. A mute button, M, was added in the next version. Version 0.0.23a added simple options to a menu accessed by pressing escape. The render distance button F was removed since it was now an option. After his multiplayer tests, Notch started work on survival mode for Minecraft. He wanted to add monsters, health and weapons. Notch started off with a bang when he released version 0.24 underscore survival underscore test, which added a lot of new stuff. First were signs, but they could not be written on, they always said, this is a test of the sign. Each line can be 15 characters. Arrows could now be fired by pressing tab and killed mobs in 7 hits, at the time they could deal 3.5 hearts of damage. Speaking of mobs, there are some in this version. First are creepers, and as a lot of you probably know, they were created accidentally when Notch tried adding pigs. Just look at this comparison, you can clearly tell which parts of the creeper are supposed to be which parts of the pig. The creeper would explode on death and attack the player as a zombie would. Their melee attacks dealt 1 to 3 hearts of damage, and their explosion dealt 6 hearts of damage. Besides the glitched pigs, actual pigs were also added as the first passive mobs. Skeletons dealt half a heart to 3 hearts of damage, and zombies dealt half a heart to 3.5 hearts of damage. A bunch of new options were added, armor was added but only for mobs and did not provide any advantages, an actual survival mode was of course added that showed a points counter upon death, and stronger mobs give more points. This is also the first version where placing and breaking blocks were rebounded to right click and left click. Saplings now grew into trees under the right conditions and the two types of mushrooms could be eaten. Red mushrooms removed 1.5 hearts, while brown mushrooms added 2.5 hearts. The next few versions only fixed bugs, which was to be expected after such a giant update. It is also worth noting that version 0.24 underscore survival underscore test 03 is the first archived survival test. Version 0.25 survival test added some more changes and new features. Mobs were faster and they could now anger when you hit them, regardless of distance. Mobs could also despawn naturally, although the system for doing so was drastically different. Instead of just disappearing when they're too far for you to despawn, they would lose health over time and slowly die away. This version also made hostile mobs fight each other. For some reason, pigs now dropped brown mushrooms when they died and skeletons dropped arrows. Worlds could also be saved and loaded now, and at the time, worlds were still called levels. Version 0.26 survival test is the next big update we'll look into. It added rain, but you could only create it by pressing F5. Spiders were added and dropped brown mushrooms when they died. New blocks included stone slabs, an iron block, and TNT. The TNT did not get triggered by other explosives yet. And there is also a new brick block, mossy cobblestone, a bookshelf, and an unobtainable version of the cobweb. The block drops were heavily altered, but in quite a weird way. Stone drops cobblestone, coal ore drops stone slabs, gold ore drops gold blocks, and iron ore drops iron blocks. Imagine it was still like that today, I'd be rich.
With that, we've reached the end of the survival test. We now enter the late classic era. Version 0.28 added many new things. First, Notch re-added creative mode and you could now switch game modes but only through file editing. Survival mode was disabled, sheep were added and they dropped cloth and mushrooms when killed, and sadly they were only in survival mode. Obsidian was added and was a very durable block but it also dropped cobblestone for some reason. Multiplayer was back with a ton of bug fixes. In version 0.30, world generation was sped up drastically and TNT could be ignited by hitting it. The late classic period is already over. Just to give you some insight, the in-dev period of Minecraft started around December of 2009. In-dev 0.31, 2009-1223-1 was created on the 23rd of December 2009, as indicated by its name. This version added Rana, a player-like mob wearing a frog outfit. All other mobs no longer spawned, which is kind of weird. Dynamic lighting was added, and this version also removed multiplayer, making it a quite broken and lacking version, which is probably due to it being the first in-dev version. In-dev 0.31-2009-1223-1559 added some new stuff. Torches were added and they could be placed on the ground and on walls, you could make one float by destroying the block under it. We now move on to the last version created in 2009, being in-dev 0.31-2009-1231-2. Items could now be dropped using Q and Notch also added some new items. First was armor, he added lever armor, lever chain armor, chain mail armor and iron armor. The quiver was also added which served as an early bow. The version also includes the apple, a shovel and a sword. These two new tools had an iron texture but weren't called the iron shovel or the iron sword, and the eating of mushrooms was also disabled and players could now place them instead. In version indev 0.31-2010-0106, new level options were added. These include the following, island. The world is a large island surrounded by water and gravel and sand were very common. Floating, the world was made up of chains of small islands with a void below and flat, which is similar to today's super flat option. The original world option resembles the terrain from the late classic era. You can also choose a map size and a shape. Small, normal and huge were sizes and square, long and deep were shapes. In version indev 0.31-2010-0107, a hell world type was added. It was like the normal world, but no plants grew and all water was replaced by lava. This is thought to be an early version of what became the Never. Version Indev 0.31-2010-0109 added fire and it could now destroy wood, leaves and other burnable blocks. Lava also set blocks on fire now. Version Indev 0.31-2010-0110 added flint and steel used to create fire. The axe and pickaxe tools were also added and mined wood and stone blocks faster than by hand. A bow texture was added but not implemented, shovels also received their speed mining feature, and apples healed two hearts. Mobs could now also catch on fire. In version indev 0.31-2010-0113, water was drastically changed to be finite, like in modern versions. The water smoothly flowed from its source, but it was not exactly like it is today. In indev 0.31-2010-0122, Bows were finally implemented as a way to shoot arrows. Lava also got the finite treatment like water did, and a lot of other small changes were made in this update. In Indev 0.31-2010-0124-1, chests were added, allowing players to store items. There was also a bug where you could create a triple chest, and the Indev house structure was added containing chests with stacks of almost every item in the game. In version Indev 0.31-2010-0128, Diamond ore was added. A diamond block was also added, as well as the gear, a useless block which was later removed. Diamond, coal, iron ingot and gold ingot items were also added and were dropped by their ores. Wooden tools, stone tools and diamond tools were also added and the tools from before became iron tools. This is the first version containing a trace of crafting, because by pressing B, the player could open a crafting menu. This menu was very lacking however, a lot of mouse picking options like right clicking to take one item were also added. Dropped items are now 3D instead of the previous flat 2D textures. 
version indev 0.31 2010 added the stick item which would be used to craft tools. Two new mobs were added, Steve and Black Steve, both resembled the model of the removed Rana mob, and they looked like high quality models of Steve. They had 10 hearts like a player and did not drop anything. Crafting is now fully implemented and players are able to craft swords, pickaxes, shovels, axes, sticks, torches and ore blocks. You could also smelt ores into their ingot forms but not for a furnace, only by throwing them in lava. After this giant update Notch dropped another one right after. Version indev 0.31 2010 0.130 added the workbench which would open the crafting menu when right clicked. Golden tools were also added as well as the bowl and mushroom stew which recovered 4 hearts of health. Gunpowder, string and feather were also added. Another humanoid mob, Beast Boy, was added to the game. He dropped feathers when he died and chests could now be crafted, Black Steve dropped gunpowder and Steve dropped feathers. These were replacements for what would later become mob drops of creepers and chickens. A lot of new crafting recipes were also added. Moving on to version indev 0.31-2010-0131, splash texts were added as well as this iconic Minecraft logo. Swords deal more damage than your fists and tools have durability now. All humanoid mobs were removed in this version. The human mob that players could previously spawn by pressing G was re-added although it spawned on itself and randomly dropped gunpowder, feathers and string. Indev 0.31-2010-0201-1 added glass and cloth crafting recipes and items now got destroyed when thrown into lava. Indev 0.31-2010-0201-2 added the feature that we love to watch streamers rage over, being the fact that ores only drop ingots when they're mined with the right tier of tool. What do you mean stop? Indev 0.31-2010-0202 added over 50 new splash texts, TNT now hurts mobs and tools can be used to damage mobs with more damage according to their higher tier. The human mob was removed and pigs, sheep, skeletons, zombies and creepers were re-added to the game. Indev 0.31-2010-0205 added the giant mob, a giant version of the zombie mob that only attacks when the player is on top of it. Surprisingly, although being completely useless, this mob has stayed in the game for years. Difficulty levels were also added, being peaceful, easy, normal and hard. Indev 2010-0206 added farmland that you could create using the new hoe item. Wheat crops could be grown on it and drop the new wheat item. This also came with seeds and bread. A player model was also added into the inventory menu, and the lever chain armor set has also been removed. Mushroom stew now restores 5 hearts. Indev 2010-0211, released on February 11th, 2010, added a day and night cycle, both day and night last 7.5 minutes, for a total of 15 minutes per day. Passive mobs got their own sounds and sheep now drop wool when they die. In Indev 2010-0212-1, the old armor was replaced with the new armor system. There are chest plates, leggings, helmets and boots that you can craft from wool, chain, gold, iron and diamond. It does not yet reduce damage. Indev 2010-0213 makes skeletons and zombies burn in daylight. And spiders only attack in daylight if you provoke them, meaning you attack them first. Indev 2010-0218 added the full functionality of armor, a ton of new splash texts and a third person mode for the F5 button. Another big update is Indev 2010-0219. This update added the furnace, where players could smelt items, flint, raw pork chop and cooked pork chop were also added. Creepers now drop gunpowder, pigs drop raw pork chops, sheep drop absolutely nothing, skeletons still drop arrows, spiders drop string and zombies drop feathers for some reason. Indev 2010-0223 added paintings, 19 of them to be exact. That was a lot of updates, but the in-dev period of Minecraft is over. We now enter the inf-dev period. Starting off strong, inf-dev 2010-0227-1 added infinite world generation. It also added golden apples, a brick pyramid structure and the obsidian wall structure that indicates the X and Z axes. When you go over 33 million blocks out, the world generation corrupts and creates what is now known as the Farlands. 
For some reason, this version removed music, trees, the end of house, the daylight cycles, dynamic lighting, caves, ores, and the world boundary. End of death 2010 03-13 added a world boundary at 33 million blocks, so without modifications, no more farlands. The daylight cycle is back, but only takes 8 minutes now. Dynamic lighting is also back. End of death 2010 03-20 a re-added trees and ores. Further versions re-added a lot of features that previously got removed. The Farlands moved to 12 million blocks in one version and terrain was completely revamped. Invdev 2010-04-15 made mobs spawn naturally again and they now also save with a world. For some reason arrows do not save yet. In Invdev 2010-06-07 ladders and doors were added along with quite a few bugs. End of death 2010-06-15 added buckets, water buckets and lava buckets, allowing you to place their according source blocks. Days are now slightly longer than nights and a new graphics option was added. End of death 2010-06-16-1 made flowers spawn naturally, as well as caves and the bedrock layer. Pools of lava and water now spawn, so do coastlines of sand. End of death 2010-06-17-2 added less random ores, suffocation and the infinite cobble generator. Obsidian could now also be made from water touching a lava source block. In death 2010-06-18 added rails along with the new minecart entity. This update was known as the first Secret Friday update. The minecart however acted like the modern minecart with chest as you could right click it to store items in it. Blocks could now fall as the new falling block entity. Invdev 2010-06-25-2 is the second Secret Friday update, adding dungeons with loot and a new mob spawner block, as well as a saddle item. In Invdev 2010-06-29, the last Invdev version we're going to talk about, players can craft cobblestone and wooden stairs. The game is now playable offline and in an official client. We're getting close to 1.0, but we still need to cross the alpha period of the game. Beginning with alpha version 1.0.1, it is the third Secret Friday update. It added iron doors, levers, redstone, redstone ore, redstone torches, stone buttons, wooden pressure plates and stone pressure plates, basically the start of the redstone era for Minecraft. Alpha version 1.0.4 is the fourth Secret Friday update, and it added snow, slippery ice and a winter map type where there would be snowfall and snow layers. There is a 25% chance of this type being automatically selected. The next version added snowballs and a snow block as an addition to this 4th Secret Friday update. Alpha version 1.0.6 was the 5th Secret Friday update and this time Notch added cacti, yes that is the plural form of cactus, I think, that would damage the player when they touched it. Large trees are now back and there are now boats that you can ride in even on land. Alpha version 1.0.8, although not being a Secret Friday update, added a lot of new features. It added lever, milk buckets and the cow mob that dropped lever when it died. The milk bucket was at the time unobtainable, so you couldn't yet milk cows. Alpha version 1.0.10 was the first version to re-add multiplayer, although you could only play on Mojang's private server where only certain players were allowed to join. Alpha version 1.0.11, known as Secret Friday 6, added a ton of stuff. It added reeds, an old version of sugarcane, as well as clay, paper, books, bricks and slime balls. The slime mob was added, it would split into smaller slimes when it died, and the smallest ones dropped slime balls when they died and no longer split. Bookshelves, bricks and cacti were changed with new crafting recipes. Alpha version 1.0.13 underscore 01 is a weird version since the Minecraft logo on the menu screen was changed from just saying Minecraft to say 1k in 24h. This of course indicated 1000 in 24 hours which was to celebrate selling 1000 copies in the last 24 hours which at the time was crazy to think about for such a small game. Alpha version 1.0.14 also known as Secret Friday 7 added some well known features. First is the jukebox block, along with two music discs, 13 and cat, made by C418. Eggs were also added but could not be thrown, minecarts with furnaces and chests were also added, 
and the chicken mob was finally added as the fourth passive mob in the game. The logo was now back to Minecraft, except due to a bug, the M in the logo was broken and sometimes it was gone. Alpha version 1.0.15 added multiplayer for other servers than only Mojang's private server. This is the first alpha version with full multiplayer functionality. Some server code fixes were added in the following versions, including the banning and kicking commands. Alpha version 1.0.17 is the 8th Secret Friday update. It added chickens, slimes and pigs to multiplayer and made the day and night cycle work there as well. Fences were added, so were spider jockeys, which are skeletons riding spiders. This version also added the chickens slow falling ability, which makes them basically negate fall damage. In the following weeks, Notch fixed a lot of bugs, including an old duplication bug. Moving on to Alpha 1.1.0, the first Alpha 1.1 version, also known as the 9th and last Secret Friday update, but not the last Secret update. The compass was added, lava buckets could now be used as fuel in furnaces, and the inventory of a player was now stored server-side, instead of being a file on the player's computer, and this is very important since inventory hacking was incredibly easy before this change. Notch however could not get enough of his secret updates as the next version, Alpha version 1.1.1 was named Secret Saturday and it was released on a Saturday. This was the 10th and actually final secret update. It added fishing rods which at the time served no purpose and they were stackable. There were also 5 new paintings including some of the most famous ones to date. A major game mechanic, sneaking, was added in this version, yes that is right, before this version there was basically no sneaking in the game as well as a mouse sensitivity option and audio volume sliders. Alpha version 1.2.0 is the next big update. The nether dimension was finally added and with it came a lot of new blocks and mobs. Netherrack, soul sand, glowstone, the nether portal, carved pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns which are pumpkins with light in them. The clock item was added and it indicated the time of day and night. Glowstone dust, raw fish and cooked fish were added as well as the big white ghast mob that shot fireballs at the player, the pigman, a player-like mob with a pig texture and the zombie pigman holding a gold sword. Along with those fish items, the fishing mechanic was implemented and so were many new biomes. The desert and tundra were added, a warm biome and a cold biome, and this is also the first version in which skeletons actually held bows and like they still do today. After this massive update, the next few versions fixed a ton of bugs that came with it as well as refining the new dimension Notch just added. Alpha version 1.2.2 added another key feature, being texture packs. Nothing else was really important here, but texture packs are a big part of the game today. The updates after this fixed bugs mostly in multiplayer and changed some textures. Alpha version 1.2.6 added the slash kill command, which actually dealt 500 hearts of damage to the player, making it so they die instantly, even if they have a crazy amount of health. We're already at the end of the alpha period. After this, things start going fast, updates are less frequent, but they are larger in size. Prepare for a lot of additions in the beta period of Minecraft. Beta 1.0 added tooltips to the inventory for when the player hovers over an item. It now showed the name of the item, the ID of the item and more information if the item had certain NBT data. Apes were added and a special model for dead mouse with ears was created. Leaf decaying was re-added, eggs could be thrown and there is a small chance of it spawning a baby chicken. Beta 1.2 is a big update and is also the first version of the game released in 2011. January 13th to be specific. Cake was added, so were dispensers, lapis lazuli blocks, lapis lazuli ores, node blocks, sandstone, spruce and birch trees with their according blocks and new colors of wool almost nearing the colors we still have today. New items include bones, bone meal, lapis lazuli, cocoa beans, insects, charcoal and many other dyes used to dye leather armor. Sugar was also added and could now be dropped from sugarcane, grey, light grey and black sheep variants were also added and so was the squid mob. It dropped insects and could be milked. This is because the code for the squid was copied over from the cow and someone forgot to edit that properly. Skeletons drop bones, spiders can climb up walls, Items were renamed to what we know them today, and spawners displayed the mob they were spawning. Two new biomes got added, Taiga, where spruce trees, spruce tree, spruce, spruce trees spawned instead of oak trees, 
and forests where birch trees spawned along oak trees. The screenshot button F2 was added and rendering speed was drastically increased. Beta 1.2 underscore 02 made lapis lazuli ores drop lapis lazuli. Beta 1.3 is the next update, it added beds, redstone repeaters and slabs. These slabs were cobblestone slabs, wood slabs and sandstone slabs. The whitelist feature was added and a texture for crying obsidian was added, but this block would only be added in version 1.16. In beta 1.4, locked chests were added as an April Fool's joke, it linked to a fake Minecraft store and only generated on April 1st. Cookies were added and healed half a heart, a new mob the wolf was added and players could tame it using a bone, when sneaking on ladders you can now hang still on them, bets set your spawn position, although it is quite broken, sheep got pink and brown colors which very rarely spawned naturally. Beta 1.5 added the birch sapling, the spruce sapling, the cobweb, and two new rails. A detector rail would send out a redstone signal when a minecart drove over it, and the powered rail sped up a minecart if it was powered by redstone. Charged creepers were added with powerful explosions, and they could be created by hitting a creeper with lightning. Pigs turn into zombie pigmen when hit by lightning. Achievements were added, there weren't that many, and weather was also added. There was rain, snow and thunderstorms. Statistics were added, pigs dropped cooked pork chops when they were on fire, and old computers were very happy when their performance was highly increased. Moving on, beta 1.6 added the dead bush found in deserts, grass, and I'm not talking about the grass block, I'm talking about the grass plants, ferns and trapdoors. Maps were also added and with them you could scope out the different biomes. A nether was also added to multiplayer. Beta 1.7 is one of my favorite beta updates, and one of my favorite updates of all time, since it adds pistons and sticky pistons. It also adds shears used to mine and pick up leaves, and it allows you to obtain wool from a sheep without brutally killing it. The silverfish mob was also added, but could not spawn, and had no AI. Flint and steel was also set as the only way to ignite TNT. Beta 1.8, also known as the Adventure Update, is a major version of the game, released on September 14th, 2011. This version heavily shows that Mojang was trying to get the game ready for its official 1.0 release. Here I go naming every new block. Stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, cracked stone bricks, infested stone variants, brick slabs, stone brick slabs, mushroom blocks, melons, melon stems and pumpkin stems, vines, iron bars, glass panes, fence gates, brick stairs and stone brick stairs. New items are raw chicken, cooked chicken, raw beef and cooked beef or steak, ender pearls which at the time had no function, melon seeds, melons, pumpkin seeds and rotten flesh. Cave spiders were added as a smaller variant of the spiders and they can poison the player. The enderman was a new tall mob and at the time it used the zombie sounds, it is able to teleport and destroy blocks. The silver fish was fully implemented and could spawn from infested blocks. Experience orbs are also new entities. The world generation got a massive upgrade, mine shafts were added with wooden planks as support beams, ravines were added so were strongholds and villages, although the ladder was not populated yet. Huge mushrooms existed but did not generate naturally, new biomes include oceans, plains, deserts, extreme hills, forests, taigas, swamps and rivers. Flying was added to creative mode, bows now had to be charged before shooting them, and the hunger system was added. Mobs drop experience orbs that add to the new experience bar, there are status effects, regeneration, hunger and poison, unobtainable effects included speed, slowness, haste, mining fatigue, instant health, instant damage, water breathing and nausea. There were also effects that were unobtainable but also non-functional, being strength, weakness, jump boost, resistance, fire resistance, invisibility, blindness and night vision. Sprinting was also added, it could be activated by double tapping the move forward button. Chests have animations and sounds now, a lot of textures were changed and all items that previously restored health now restored the food bar. The human mob was finally removed and the far lands was removed from the game's code. With that we have reached the final beta version. The next big release of the game is 1.0, the first official release of Minecraft. It's time, time to finally release the game. On November 18th, 2011, 
Notch launched the game in its 1.0 release. After 916 days of development, almost 3 years of progress, the main game was done. Let's go over this first official release and what it added. Brewing stands are new and are used to brew new potions. Cauldrons can be filled up with water buckets. Dragon eggs are generated after the ender dragon is killed and can only be picked up when it falls onto a torch and if you hit it, it teleports away. Enchantment tables are used to enchant tools, weapons and armor. The end portal is generated when all 12 end portal frames in a stronghold are filled with eyes of ender. Lily pads spawn in the new swamp biome. Mycelium spawn in the new mushroom island biome. Never bricks, never brick fences and nether brick stairs make up the new nether fortress. A new crop is nether wart used to brew potions. Blaze powder is another ingredient used for potions and for crafting eyes of ender. Blaze rods are dropped by blazes and can be crafted into blaze powder. The eye of ender is used to activate the end portal and to find a stronghold. It's crafted from an ender pearl and blaze powder. Fermented spider eyes are also used for brewing. So are gas tears and glass bottles. Glistering melons and magma cream are used for this too. Zombie pigmen now drop gold nuggets. 9 new music discs got added. 11. Blocks, Chirp, Far, Mall, Mellow High, Stall, Strat and Ward. Potions provide status effects after drinking them. Spider eyes are another ingredient for brewing dropped by spiders. Splash potions are potions that you can throw on the ground. Mushrooms are passive mobs that can spawn in mushroom islands and you can milk them for mushroom stew. Chicks, calves, piglets and lambs are baby versions of their according mobs. Blazes were added as a hostile nether mob, it flies and throws fireballs at the player. Magma cubes were another hostile nether mob, they're like slimes but don't take fall damage and are immune to fire damage. Snow golems can be created by placing two snow blocks vertically and a pumpkin on top. They melt in hot biomes and place snow where they walk. They also throw snowballs at enemies. Villagers spawn in villages and have the same AI as pigs. They also have different skins based upon their professions. New biomes include frozen ocean, frozen river, ice mountains, ice plains, mushroom islands, which are very rare, and the end biome. The latter is found in the new dimension, the end. With the end comes the ender dragon and also endstone. The end portal room is a new structure added to strongholds. The nether fortress generates in the nether and spawns blazes from blaze spawners. Breeding was added, when you feed two animals wheat, they will mate and create a baby version of themselves. Brewing was implemented with complex recipes leading to different potions. Enchanting was implemented, allowing you to give armor, tools and weapons special properties. A poem was added after entering the exit portal in the end, as well as a credit sequence. You can craft two items together to repair them and add up their durability. New achievements include DIAMONDS, we need to go deeper, return to sender, into fire, local brewery, the end, enchanter, overkill and librarian. Hardcore mode was added, it locks the difficulty to hard and forces players to delete their worlds on death. The health bar also has a special texture. There are a ton of new video settings and splash texts. Lots of textures got changed. Milk now clears a player of all their potion effects. Status effects show up in the player's inventory of textures. And there we go! That is all the features added in 1.0. If you think this is a lot, just wait until we reach further updates like 1.16. It's only gonna get larger from here. Moving on to version 1.1. Five snapshots lead up to the release of the next major version of the game, 1.1. It was released on January 12th, 2012. Surprisingly, this version did not add any new blocks. Here are the new additions. Spawn eggs, 20 of them, allowing you to summon a mob by right-clicking them. They are exclusive to creative mode. New biomes include beaches, desert hills, extreme hills edge, forest hills and taiga hills. A new super flat world type got added. A completely flat world composed of bedrock, dirt and grass blocks. Villages can also generate there. The game was translated into 56 languages, which is one of this update's main features. Bows can now be enchanted. Shot creepers can drop music discs. 
and that's already it for 1.1's important additions. As you can probably tell, this version was quite boring and not that big in general. Next up is version 1.2. This version had a lot of subversions, meaning there would be 1.2.1, 1.2.2, 1.2.3 1 and so on. Version 1.2.0 is a pre-release of the update and will not be covered here. Starting with 1.2.1, it took 8 snapshots to reach the full release. The update added the following blocks. Chiseled stone bricks, redstone lamps, jungle wood along with all of its counterparts, and that's all the blocks. Disappointing, yeah I know. This will be a continuing trend until around 2013 when Microsoft bought the game. From that point, updates were less frequent and way bigger. Moving on to the other additions now, the Bottle of Enchanting, it can be used to spawn experience orbs and is only available in creative mode. Fire charges create fire like flint and steel, but they can also be shot from dispensers. Iron golems are added and spawn in villages, they attack hostile mobs and protect the villagers. You can create one yourself by placing iron blocks and a pumpkin in this pattern. Ocelots were added along with a spawn egg, you can tame one using raw fish. They scare creepers away and act similar to tamed wolves. The jungle biome was added. Desert wells were added as a new structure, it has no functionality. Zombie sieges can now occur at villages, where a large number of zombies might spawn. The world height limit was increased to 256 blocks, doubling the previous limit of 128. Versions 1.2.2 and 1.2.3 only fixed a few bugs that came with the last big version. Version 1.2.4 added birch, spruce and jungle wood planks, and version 1.2.5 fixed some bugs as well as tweaking a few features. We're already on to version 1.3. This version released officially on August 1st, 2012, after 19 snapshots and one pre-release. The pre-release had the version number of 1.3.0, but the full release which I'm covering is 1.3.1. Here are the new additions for this version. Wood added as a 6 sided log variant, emerald ores and emerald blocks, ender chests allowing you to store items across dimensions and far distances, tripwire hooks place some string in between them to detect when someone walks over it, all types of wooden slabs got added as well as their stair variants, sandstone stairs are finally added, the emerald item can be used to trade with villagers, a book and quill can be used to write books up to 50 pages, Doing so produces a written book that is signed and it can be shared with other players. The golden apple has a second tier now, now also referred to as the god apple. You can now generate worlds with an optional bonus chest, this chest will spawn with random loot for you to use. Desert villages and desert temples are new structures with loot to collect. Jungle pyramids also got added with traps included. Adventure mode was added making it so the player cannot break or place blocks. The trading mechanic was added, albeit very different from the modern system added in 1.14. New commands include slash seed, slash default game mode, slash debug, slash game mode, slash time, slash gift, slash xp, slash kill and slash help. The game now has a demo world, there is only one seed and you can play for 5 in-game days or 40 minutes. There is now a large biome world type for those who really love a specific biome. Logs can now be turned in all directions. Furnaces can have wooden tools as fuel now, and when a lava bucket is used as fuel, the bucket is given back. Cauldrons now fill up when it's raining. Dispensers can now place minecarts and boats. TNT damage now varies based upon the difficulty. This is a feature that even I didn't know ever existed. And tons of texture changes and 41 bug fixes. Version 1.3.2 did not add anything and only fixed a few bugs. Minecraft version 1.4 is also known officially as the pretty scary update. It added quite a few mechanics, mobs, blocks and well known items. The update had 15 snapshots and 2 pre-releases, which is why we will start with the official release version 1.4.2. Without further ado, here's the new additions. Command blocks, which are of course my favorite blocks, they can run editable commands when they're triggered using redstone and their actual intended use was for adventure maps, they're only obtainable using the slash gif command, which is still the case today. Beacons are a new endgame block, it can be activated by building a pyramid under it, and the bigger the pyramid, the bigger the effect range and the more effects you can select. When activated, a light beam will shine from it, 
and it can give speed, haste, resistance, jump boost and strength effect. Anvils can be used to repair and enchant items at the cost of experience levels. You can also use it to rename any item. Flower pots are a new decorative item, allowing you to finally display plants and saplings in your home, without having to build a literal garden on the inside. Cobblestone walls are a new block and also act as a new type of block, the walls. They're like fences, but they look much different and in my opinion are way really cooler. Mob heads are a thing now, they exist for wither skeletons, creepers, zombies, skeletons and players. You can also obtain a specific player's skin head by adding the skull owner NBT tag. Wooden buttons finally got added, that took way too long. Potatoes and carrots are two new crops. Potatoes can be baked to obtain baked potatoes, and you can use carrots to make a carrot on a stick, used to control pigs when riding them. You can now create pumpkin pie, it restores 4 food bars. Wivers drop nether stars, used to craft a beacon. Potions of night vision and invisibility were added, allowing you to see in the dark and hide from others. New spawn eggs were added for the new mobs. The river was of course added, it's a free headed flying player created boss mob. You can create it using soul sand and free wither skeleton skulls, kind of like an iron golem. Wither skeletons got added and they spawn in nether fortresses. They are strong and give the player the wither effect when they get hit. The witch mob was added, another scary mob, hence the name of this update. It looks like a villager but has a thing on its nose and a hat. It can heal itself using potions but it can also use those potions to harm others. Finally, bats were added, they spawn at low light levels and are useless. Item frames were added so you can now show off your rare items to flex on a friend. Witch huts were added as the only spawning locations for witches. And now onto the command changes. The slash difficulty command lets you change the world difficulty from peaceful to hard. Slash spawn points changes any player's spawn points. Slash W was added as an alias for the slash tell command. Slash weather was added used to change the weather manually. Slash game rule was added, another very important command. Slash clear lets you clear anyone's inventory. And you can now create corner stairs. Repeaters can now be locked by powering their sides. Trapdoors can now be placed on the top half of blocks. Fire now spreads based upon the selected difficulty. You can now color the color of a wolf. Pigs when ridden can go up to 5 meters a second, which is about the speed of an average cyclist. Version 1.4.3 was a pre-release for version 1.4.4, which I find weird since that version barely added any new features. It added the wait music disc, the slash enchant command, and 31 bug fixes. Version 1.4.5 fixed a whopping 74 bugs, and version 1.4.6 is another bigger update. It added nether brick slabs, enchanted books, firework stars along with firework rockets, allowing you to create a cool firework show for all your friends, that is if you have friends. The forum's enchantment was added, it redirects a portion of the damage done to the person wearing it, and 21 bugs were fixed and a lot of minor tweaks were made to previous editions. Version 1.4.7 fixed 17 bugs. I am no genius at redstone, but I'll try to explain update 1.5, the redstone update, as best as I possibly can. Here are the new additions. Activator rails can be used to ignite minecarts with TNT. The block of redstone, a block that really should have been added earlier, is now here. The daylight sensor was added, allowing you to turn the sun into a form of energy. Droppers can spit items out and can be used in advanced item sorting contraptions. Hoppers are also added in this version. They can transfer items between one another and bring them from location A to B quickly. Redstone comparators are here, a very complicated block. They can get an output from a container block, like a chest or even a jukebox, and give off a stronger signal based on how full the container is. The trapped chest can be used to epically troll your friends, because opening this chest gives off a redstone signal. You can spot one using the red stain around the chest's latch. Weighted pressure plates, both iron and gold, allow you to detect item drops. The more items, the more redstone power. Never quartz ores were added along with the block of quartz, quartz slabs, quartz stairs, chiseled quartz and quartz pillars. Snow can now be placed in layers. Never bricks and never quartz are new never items. The minecart with hopper, minecart with spawner and minecart with TNT entities were finally added. 
the scoreboard feature and command was added. This is for me one of the most essential features for mapping and coding because you can create variables and track players actions. Slash test for which is now removed as the slash execute command replaced it. The slash effect command can give any effect to any player for any amount of time at any amplifier. Minecraft Realms was added as a proof of concept but is currently only a preview. Death messages now include the cause of the death. More than 100 bugs were fixed. The next version only fixed about 21 bugs and so did the last version of 1.5. Alright, version 1.6. This version was officially dubbed the horse update since it added features related to, well, horses. It's important to note that this version was released on July 1st, 2013. The update had one pre-release, hence why we're now gonna look at the changes added in version 1.6.1, the official release. Hay bales were added, they're basically a kind of wheat block that can be placed in all orientations. Carpets can be made from every color of wool and can be placed on any block, even translucent ones. Hardened clay was added and could be obtained by smelting a clay block in a furnace. From that you could make stained clay with any of the 16 available colors. The block of coal was finally added. Horse armor was added as well as the horse spawn egg. The armor has a diamond, iron and gold variant. It cannot be crafted and is found in loot chests. Leads can be used to bind mobs to fences or lead them around. Name tags can be found in dungeon chests and can be used to name your pets. The horse mob was added and it was actually inspired by Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures mod, more about the oldest Minecraft mods in my other video. To tame a horse, the player must ride them a few times. They can be bred with golden carrots and apples. Donkeys were added, they're like horses but smaller and grey, and they can carry chests with 15 slots on their saddles. Mules are a cross mob between horses and donkeys, you can't breed them, which is similar to how you can't breed crossbreeds in real life. New status effects include health boost, absorption and saturation. The new commands are slash spread players, used to spread out players from an origin point, slash play sounds, used to play any sound at any pitch or volume to any player, slash game rule got some new game rules being natural regeneration and do daylight cycle. The resource pack system replaced the old texture pack system, you can now replace textures, sounds, fonts, languages, the end credits, splash text and so much more. Minecraft also got a new, more safe launcher along with this update. Realms is now more operational than ever before with invitations, roles and more, and 86 bugs were fixed. Version 1.6.2 added baby zombies and baby pigmen, as well as 72 bug fixes. Version 1.6.3 was a pre-release, and version 1.6.4 fixed 5 bugs. The name of the 1.7 update is slightly over exaggerated, but what its name implies is clear. This update is a massive improvement to the terrain generation of Minecraft. It adds new structures, biomes and cave types, and the update was preceded by 14 snapshots and 2 pre-releases. So let's start at the first official release, being 1.7.2. Stained glass is a new block, it's like the original glass block, except it can be dyed into 16 different colors. They can also be further crafted into stained glass panes. New wood variants along with their according blocks are acacia and dark oak. Their sapling, stair, slab, plank and leaves variants were also added in this version. Packed ice is like normal ice but it doesn't melt and does not turn into water. Podzol is a dirt variant that does not spread and does not spread anything else. Coarse dirt is the second new dirt variant, currently unobtainable only using commands. Red sand, generated in the Mesa biome, behaves like normal sand, but it's red. There are many new flower types that are craftable into dyes. These include red, orange, white and pink tulips, blue orchids, alliums, azure bluets, oxeye daisies and poppies. There are also some new two block tall plants, sunflowers, peonies, rose bushes, lilacs, double tall grass and large ferns. Pufferfish, salmon and clownfish items are added and not all of them have positive effects on the player. The potion of water breathing was added, allowing you to breathe underwater for longer. The quote unquote useless minecart with command block was added. Do not ask me why this was ever added, do not ask me what its function is, I have absolutely no idea. Acacia trees and dark oak trees spawn now. New biomes are mesa, savanna, sunflower plains, roof forest, birch forest, flower forest, taiga, mega taiga, extreme hills plus and deep ocean. 
the amplified world type scales up world generation rules, making for huge tall biomes reaching the world height and lag on your computer. New commands are slash set idle timeout for servers, slash tell raw, very useful for map creators, slash summon, slash achievement, slash set blocks, slash test for block, and slash set world spawn. One splash text was added and so were 6 new achievements and 4 new statistics. Weighted pressure plates now output a signal stronger based upon how many entities are on it. Iron golems now drop poppies instead of roses. Creepers can be lit using flint and steel. Old biomes also got massive revamps with renames, more blocks and prettier generation. Biomes are now generized based upon temperature, snow covered, cold, medium and dry slash warm. 97 bucks for fixed in this update. In version 1.7.4, chicken jockeys were added and nothing more except slight changes and tweaks to the last big release, and versions 1.7.5 through version 1.7.10 only fixed the bugs, most of them related to streaming Minecraft and Minecraft rounds. From version 1.8 and on, snapshots were no longer counted as versions. This means the first official 1.8 release was actually just called 1.8.0, instead of 1.8.3 or something. Anyway, uh, 53 snapshots and 3 pre-releases were created before 1.8 was released on September 2nd, 2014. It added the following features. Diorite, andesite, granite and coarse dirt are new naturally generating blocks that are pretty much useless. Prismarine along with prismarine bricks and dark prismarine can be found in the new ocean monuments. Red sandstone is a new block, along with stairs and slabs. Iron trapdoors are new and so are sea lanterns, wet sponges and slime blocks. They can be used to bounce mobs and players around. Banners were introduced with custom patterns and layers, allowing for complex customization. Barriers were added, allowing map makers to more easily block paths using invisible blocks. Diorite, andesite and granite have polished variants as well. Fences, fence gates and doors got variants for all types of wood in the game. Raw mutton and cooked mutton, raw rabbit and cooked rabbits, rabbit stew, rabbit hide and rabbit's foot were added as new mob drops. New spawn eggs were added for the new mobs. The potion of leaping gives the player the jump boost effect. Endermites were added, they have a chance to spawn when someone uses an ender pearl or when an enderman teleports around. Guardians spawn in ocean monuments, they attack squids and the player with a beam. There is also a bigger boss variant, the Elder Guardian. Rabbits were added with 8 different skins. There is also a Killer Bunny variant, which is a reference to Monty Python. Armor stands were finally added, another key component to complex coding and map creation. The customized world type was added, allowing players to, to tinker with and tweak terrain generation. The debug world type was added, accessed by holding shift when selecting world types, it spawns every existing block in every possible MBT variant. There is one new advancement and one new enchantment. The spectator game mode was added and I don't think I have to explain what that is. New commands are slash execute, slash trigger, slash replace items, slash block data, slash entity data, slash clone, slash fill, slash test for block, slash stats, slash world border, slash title, slash particle. There are also four new game rules. Many new splash texts and options were added and 426 bugs were fixed, that's a ton. Update 1.8.1 only fixed some bugs and changed minor stuff, 1.8.2 added some new stats, splashes and changes, version 1.8.3 only fixed 11 bugs, 1.8.4 fixed 14 bugs, and 1.8.5 through version 1.8.9 only fixed some bugs and tweaked minor things. Let's start off with version 1.9. It released on February 29th, 2016. This is the version I first played since I created my account all the way back then. The update was preceded by 56 snapshots and 4 pre-releases. Here are the new things. Chorus flowers and chorus plants spawn in the end. Dragon heads, they can be worn and have a small animation when worn or when activated by redstone. And gateways are spawned after defeating the dragon and take you to the outer end islands and rods and stone bricks, purple blocks and more make up the new structures like end cities, more on those later. Frosted ice is created when using the frostwalker enchantment. Grass paths can be made by using a shovel and a grass block. Structure blocks were added, used to save and load your own structures. Beetroot, beetroot soup and seeds were added. 
Chorus Fruit can be obtained from Chorus Plants and they teleport you randomly. Dragon's Breath can be used to brew Lingering Potions. They can be collected from the Dragon's Breath. The infamous Elytra was added, found in End Cities, allowing you to soar through the air without, without a, a care, care in the world. And Crystals can be crafted and used now. Water Splash Potions were added, used to extinguish fires. Popped Chorus Fruits are obtained from cooking Chorus Fruits and are used to craft Purple Blocks. Potions of Luck were added. Shields were added along with other combat changes I won't get myself into, because controversy. Shulkers are a new block that spawn in end cities. They shoot balls that give you a levitation. Spectral arrows make enemies glow on collision. Tipped arrows are arrows but they inflict a potion effect on collision. Igloos now spawn in the ice plains and cold taiga. The mending enchantment was added, it restores an item's durability when holding it while collecting experience. A bunch of changes were made to the core structure of item and entity NBT. Command blocks now have repeat and chain variants, and the old one, the original one, is called Impulse. Dead bushes now drop sticks when broken without shears, and those are the new additions. This version added a lot of stuff and also changed a lot of things about existing features in the game, which I sadly do not have the time to list. Version 1.9.1 added sound effects for the Elytra, version 1.9.2 fixed a few bugs, 1.9.3 added the slash top sound command, and version 1.9.4 fixed 5 bugs. Moving on to version 1.10, titled the Frostburn Update. It changed many things in very cold and very hot biomes, including the Never. It took 3 snapshots and 2 pre-releases to reach the official release, and here is what it added. Structure voids, and their mechanic is complicated, which I won't discuss here, but they have something to do with the earlier added structure blocks. Magma blocks are new, they spawn in the Never. Never ward blocks, red never bricks, and bone blocks are added. Polar bears are new big wide bears that swim faster than the player and drop raw fish. The thing that scares me is that their texture file is stored in a folder called bears, meaning we might see more bears in future updates. Strays spawn in ice plains, they're like skeletons where they can drop tipped arrows. The husk is a new zombie type, it spawns in deserts and does not burn in sunlight. Fossils can now be found on the ground, they come in many different shapes and sizes. The slash teleport command was added with Y and X rotation. Auto jump was added, why did they ever add this, auto jump is terrible, and 37 bugs are fixed. This seems like quite a small update and in my opinion that definitely is, but more is coming soon, so don't worry. Versions 1.10.1 and 1.10.2 only fixed bugs and tweaked things slightly. Version 1.11 We're going quick, partly because I don't want this video to be an hour long, and this version, called the Exploration Update, was released on November 14th, 2016. It had 14 snapshots and one pre-release. Let's see what it added. Observers allow for crazy redstone contraptions, some that even I have absolutely no clue how they work. Shulker boxes are used to store multiple stacks of items in one inventory slot, you can open them when it's placed and hold them. Shulker shells are dropped by shulkers and used to craft a shulker box. Totems of Undying are used to grant an extra life upon death, granting you the post-mortal achievement. Explorer maps show ocean monuments and the new woodland mansions. Illagers, Vindicators, Evokers, Vexes and Llamas were added as, a new, as new mobs in this version. The first four inhabits the Woodland Mansion. Two new game rules were added. The two curse enchantments, Curse of Binding and Curse of Vanishing, Vanishing were added. Slash Locate was added, used to locate a structure. Three new splashes were added and 289 bugs were fixed. Version 1.11.1 adds Iron Nuggets and the Sweeping Edge enchantment. Version 1.11.2 only fixes 24 bugs. Version 1.12 was launched on June 7th, 2017 with a flashy trailer dubbing it the Roll of Color update. It had 11 snapshots and 7 pre-releases. Here's the colorful new additions. 15 new bed colors were added. Concrete and concrete powder was added, it comes in the 16 colors. Knowledge books were added, used to gain crafting recipes. Illusioners were added as new hostile mobs. 
Parrots were added, another colorful mob to spice up the jungle biome, you can even tame them. Achievements were replaced with the new advancement system. Data pack functions were added, changing map creation forever. The slash recipe and slash advancement commands are used to unlock recipes and advancements. You can now create custom crafting recipes. The annoying narrator feature was finally added. What did you just Banners say have about a new me? texture now, and 53 bugs were fixed. While the list of additions doesn't do it credit, this version added many revolutionary features to the game, like many data pack functions, many colors, and so much more. Version 1.12.1 .1 updated the credits with more staff for Mojang and fixed 4 bugs. 1.12.2 fixed 12 issues, and you may recognize this version as basically the main version for many mods and mod packs these days, because this is most likely due to it being the last stable version before 1.13 a version known for ruining the backend performance of the game. Version 1.13 was named the Aquatic Update. It was released on July 18th, 2018. It had 42 snapshots and 10 pre-releases. Here's what it added. Blue Ice now generates any new icebergs. Bubble Columns are created by magma blocks or soul sand in water. The former pulls entities down and the latter pushes entities up. Buttons, pressure plates and trapdoors come in all wood variants now. Carved pumpkins are new and they show an overlay when worn. Conduits allow you to breathe underwater when placed in a specific correct structure. Coral comes in 5 variants with a different type each. They generate naturally in coral reefs. Coral blocks also get added. And coral fans also use the same colors and types, so do dead coral blocks and dead coral fans. Dried kelp blocks can be used as bulky fuel in a furnace. Kelp is a new underwater plant. Prismarine stairs and slabs were added. Seagrass was added as another new plant. Sea pickles can be placed with up to 4 in 1 block. Strip locks can be made by using an axe on a lock. Stripped wood is made using the same method. Turtle eggs can be made by breeding the new turtle mob and zombies will stomp on them. The debug stick was added, allowing you to tinker with a block's data values. Buckets of fish were added. Heart of the sea, kelp, dried kelp, mushroom blocks, stems, nautilus shells, petrified oak slabs, phantom membranes and scoots are all new items without much functionality. Smooth variants of blocks were added. The trident was added, a new weapon to use underwater. Dolphins, drowned, cod, salmon, pufferfish, tropical fish, phantoms and turtles are the new oceanic mobs in this version. The buffet world type was added. Buried treasures were added along with maps and shipwrecks leading to them. Ocean ruins also spawn in the ocean now. New enchantments include channeling, impaling, loyalty, riptide and more. You can now swim by sprinting in water. Conduit power, dolphins grace and slow falling are new status effects. Slash boss bar, slash data, slash data pack, slash locate, slash scoreboard, slash teleport and slash time were added or modified in this update. 4 new advancements, 3 new splash decks and 1 new statistic were added and was added in this version. This version also fixed 385 bugs. Version 1.13.1 re-added punch to explode TNT using an unstable state. That coral was also added. 149 bugs were fixed. 1.13.2 fixed performance issues and fixed 25 bugs. Up next is version 1.14, the Village and Pillage update. We're starting to reach areas of development where Minecraft saw a massive boost in popularity again, around 2019. This version was released on April 23rd, 2019. It had 32 snapshots and 5 pre-releases. This is what it added. Bamboo can be found in jungles and in the new Bamboo Jungles. Barrels are like chests but they can be opened when blocked. Bells are meeting points for villagers, they'll search for a bed when a bell is rung. Blast furnaces are like furnaces, but faster. Campfires can be used to cook food in a more traditional way. Cartography tables are used to modify maps and their sizes. Composters can be filled up with crops and plants to obtain bone meal. Fletching tables are useless. Cornflower, lily of the valley and river rose are new flowers. Grindstones allow you to take advancements and experience from an item. Jigsaw blocks allow you to construct structures out of smaller templates. Lanterns act as a new light source, they look great as decoration. Lecterns can be used to display books. 
Looms can be used to create banners more easily with banner patterns. The node block got xylophone, cowbell, didgeridoo, bit, banjo and pling sounds. Scaffolding is used to climb up to high areas, they can be taken down with ease. Spruce, birch, acacia, jungle and dark oak signs were added. Over 50 new slab wall and stair types were added. Smithing tables are another useless villager job block. Smokers can be used to cook food faster and they work with hoppers. Stone cutters can be used to turn blocks into their stair or slab variants. Sweet berry bushes hurt the player but produce a new food, sweet berries. Crossbows are a new ranged weapon. Lever horse armor was added. Cats, foxes, pandas, pillagers, ravagers, traded llamas and wandering traders were added. The latter wanders around selling badly priced items. Raids can occur in villages with rewards for the player. Suspicious stew was added granting a random effect. Pillager outposts are a new structure with loot protected by the pillagers. Snowy tundra villages were added. 7 new advancements were added. 30 new splash decks were added. Villagers now have jobs and they can be changed by placing a job block nearby. These, villag these villagers sell items based upon their job. And 226 bugs were fixed. While many people forget this update and what it added, 1.14 was a massive update for the game. I was surprised by what it added, including many popular features such as the barrel, scaffolding and village raids, and jobs for villagers. Version 1.14.1 fixed 60 bugs and tweaked minor things. 1.14.2 and 1.14.3 fixed 35 and 82 bugs respectively, and 1.14.4 added the slash debug command and fixed 54 bugs. Now we reach version 1.15 dubbed Buzzy Bees. It was released on December 15th, 2019 and had 15 snapshots and 7 pre-releases. Here's what it added. Beehives can house bees and can be harvested for honey. Bee nests can be used to transport bees around. Honey blocks can be used to slide along walls and for crazy redstone bills. Honeycomb blocks are decorative. Honey bottles, honeycombs and bee spawn eggs were added. Slash data slash execute slash schedule and slash spectate were added. Bees are a new mob that get angry when attacked. And 305 bugs were fixed. That's all? Yeah, pretty much. This version changed a lot of minor things and really only added about 10 bee related blocks as well as the bee itself. 1.15.1 fixed 10 bugs, 1.15.2 fixed 35, and that's it for buzzy bees. We all know that this is the never update, 1.16. It was released on June 23rd, 2020, and had 19 snapshots, 8 pre-releases and 1 release candidate. Here are the additions. Ancient debris can be mined to obtain netherite scrap. Basalt blocks generate in new soul sand valleys and basalt deltas. Blackstone generates in basalt deltas and comes in polished, regular chiseled, polished, polished brick and cracked polished brick variants. Netherite is a new gem tier. Diamond tools and armor can be upgraded to this new netherite tier and netherite blocks were also added. A chain block generates in bastion remnants. Chiseled and cracked nether bricks were added. Crimson and warped fungi and nylium are new sapling types and grass block variants in the nether. These then come with their tree variants and roots and stems. Crying Obsidian is a new obsidian variant. Hi-Fi, that probably didn't pronounce that correctly. Hi-Fi. Lodestones, Nether Gold Ore, Nether Sprouts, and Gilded Blackstone are new nether blocks too. Quartz Bricks are a new quartz variant. Respawn Anchors allow you to respawn in the nether. Shroomlight was added. Soul Campfire, Soul Fire, Soul Lantern, Soul Torch, and Soul Soil are new soul block variants. Target blocks were added, twisting vines were added, the pig step music disc was added, hoglins, piglins, striders and zoglins are new nether mobs, basalt pillars, bastion remnants, nether fossils and ruined portals are new structures. Slash attribute and slash locate biome are new commands. 11 advancements were added and 463 bugs were fixed. 1.16.1 fixed 6 bugs, and 1.16.2 added the piglin brutes, fixed many things and 155 bucks. 1.16.3 fixed 2 bucks, 1.16.4 fixed 4, and 1.16.5 fixed 3 bucks. The cave update is here, at least the first part is. This update was released on June 8th, 2021, and had 22 snapshots, 5 pre-releases and 2 release candidates. 
Let's look at the additions in 1.17. Amethyst buds and clusters are found in the new amethyst geodes. Azalea is the new plant together with azalea leaves. Copper is another new ore, along with raw copper and the block of copper. The block of amethyst was also added. Gold and iron have raw variants now, they can also be crafted into raw metal blocks. Calcite is a new block like diorite or andesite. Candles can be placed like pickles and light places up. Cave vines light up the caves. Deep slate generates under y equals zero along with cobbled deep slate. Copper can weather in four stages and each stage has, each stage has a stair and slab variant. Deep slate has a chiseled, cracked, cobbled and polished variant coming in stairs, walls and slabs. All ores have deep slate variants now. Drip leaf breaks on contact, making for cool parkour courses. Dripstone blocks connect to dripstone that falls on your head. Glow item frames are item frames that emit light. Glow lichen is a vine used to light up caves. Hanging roots can be found in caves. Infested deep slate was also added. Light blocks can be used in naps. Lightning rods can redirect lightning to them and generate redstone power. Moss blocks can be mined with a hoe, grown with bone meal and they break the game. Moss carpet, pointed dripstone, potted azalea and rooted dirt are variants of other additions. Powdered snow is a new snow variant that you can fall into to freeze to death. Skulk sensors pick up signals from sounds. Smooth with salt was added. Spore blossom is a new plant. Tinted glass does not let light through, but is transparent. Tough is another new stone type block. Amethyst shards can be obtained from amethyst blocks. Axolotls were added. Bundles were added, but only using slash give. Copper ingots were also added. Glowberries can be eaten. Glowing sacks are dropped by glow switch, voted into the game by the players. My mistake, I meant dream. I suck his dick with a smile for hours at a time. The goat mob was also added. The spyglass allows you to see further, like an optifine. The marker entity was added, a key component of map making. And 335 bugs were fixed. As you can see, part 1 does not add the new cave types yet, those are for the next version. Version 1.17.1 fixed 48 bugs. Part 2 of the Cajun Cliffs update is here, 1.18. It was released on November 30th, 2021 and had 15 snapshots, 8 pre-releases and 4 release candidates. Let's have a look at the new additions. Caves were overhauled completely with new generation, large open areas and spaghetti, noodle and cheese caves. Mountains come in 6 types and make use of the new world height. Ores now spawn in even bigger veins. Old worlds can be upgraded to their new generation seamlessly, and 240 bugs were fixed. Unsurprisingly, my overview of the additions does not do the update justice. It took Mojang months to tweak the settings and generation until it was perfect. No new blocks, items or maps were added, since it focused on generation only. 1.88.1 fixed 8 bugs, 1.18.2 added slash plays feature, Fixed 97 bugs and added a feature to notify South Korean players to stop playing after a long amount of time. Not sure why I never heard anything about this, but okay. And now we reach the newest version of the game. After hours of me talking, hundreds of hours of scripting and editing, the video is almost over. 1.19 is leading up to be a very controversial update. It released on June 7th, 2021 and it had 11 snapshots, 5 pre-releases and 2 release candidates. Here's what it added. Frog light is a new light source. Frog spawn can hatch tadpoles. Mangrove leaves that generate any new mangrove trees along with logs, planks, roots, propagule and wood. Mud can be found there and can be crafted into mud bricks and packed mud. Reinforced deep slate is found in the Asian cities. It is found in the Asian cities. Asian cities. Skulk, Skulk Catalyst, Skulk Shrieker and Skulk Veins are the new Skulk type blocks. Disc fragments can be formed into the new Music Disc 5, very scary. Echo Shards can be used to craft recovery compasses. Goat Horns make weird goat noses and are dropped on goat ram ores. Elise can find dropped items for you. Frogs and Tadpoles are new mobs too. Frogs can eat many things with their tongue. Wardens spawn in the Asian cities and are incredibly tough bosses and their health is that of the river and the ender dragon combined. 7 advancements and 7 splash decks were added, and 137 bugs were fixed. And there we go, right? The video is over? Wrong. Here's 1.19.1, the most recent version as of this video's creation. It adds chat logging, 
and chat reporting, a feature many are dubbing the end of Minecraft. I'm not really sure what my opinion on this is, I don't like chat reporting and I believe that servers should be able to toggle this. I think it should really only be added to Minecraft Realms because that's the only thing that Minecraft is really in control of and that we pay Minecraft for. I'm not really going to get into this much because I'd be rambling for like half an hour. Uh, another addition in this version is that LA's can also be duplicated now and 36 bugs were fixed. And there we go. That is the final edition. I have now discussed every version of Minecraft from the earliest version with a weird name in 2009 to the most recent controversial chat reporting update 1.19.1. If you somehow watched this entire video, um, thank you, um, but I don't think anyone will actually sit through this entire video because I think all of these episodes combined will be more than one hour. Uh, it's been an incredible journey. So yeah, that's, that's the end of this series. I hope you enjoyed um, and I will probably stop doing commentary videos on this channel for a little bit and focus on other side projects that I've been doing. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and stay safe.